Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. Today in part 7 of DP203 exam question and answer series, we are going to cover 15 very latest exam questions. In part 7 today, I will be focusing on questions related to Azure Data Factory, Virtual Machines, Azure Spark, Azure Data Bricks, Azure Data Lake, Azure CNAP Analytics and today we will understand a new Azure service called Azure Purview. Along with that, I will also cover some questions on Azure storage account. So many important concepts are coming up. So watch the video carefully. Do not skip any part and understand the concepts to get good grades in DP203 certificate. And friends, at any stage of the video, if you find this video worth your time and an increment in your learning, please appreciate our efforts by pressing the like button, subscribing to the channel and press that bell icon to receive all the notifications of our upcoming videos. For those who are joining us for the first time here today at the Tech Blackboard, it is worth mentioning that so far in the previous six parts, we have already covered 70 very important questions on DP203. Please make sure to watch all these previous parts. The links are available in the description box. And friends, as I always say, videos are great to learn and understand the concepts when you are online. But to help you revise the questions in the offline mode as well, I will share a free PDF file containing all the 15 questions with answers covered in this part 7. And for that, you have to tell me the correct answers for the question number 74, 81 and question number 83. You will find answers to all these three questions in this video itself. So let's begin our part 7. So let's begin the part 7 with question number 71. The question says that which Azure Data Factory components orchestrates a transformation job or runs a data movement command? And your options are linked services, data sets or activities. The correct answer to this question is option A, linked services. So friends, linked services are objects that are used to define the connection to data stores. You can also visualize linked services as connection strings. Moving on with question number 72, it says that you have an Azure virtual machine that has Microsoft SQL Server installed. The server contains a table named table 1. You need to copy the data from table 1 to an Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 account by using Azure Data Factory version 2 copy activity. Which type of integration runtime should you use? Your options are Azure Integration Runtime, Self-Hosted Integration Runtime and the last option is Azure SSIS Integration Runtime. Friends, in previous many parts, we have discussed the questions around Azure Integration Runtime and many of you have asked me how to determine which integration runtime to use. Well, this time I have got Microsoft documentation to guide just on that topic. So this is the Microsoft documentation on integration runtime in Azure Data Factory. And friends, on this documentation, you have to scroll a little bit more and then you will reach to a section that's named as determining which IR to use. And here, Microsoft guides you on the principles that you can use to determine which integration runtime you can use. Now coming back to the presentation, the correct answer for this question is option A, Azure Integration Runtime. Moving on with question number 73, the question says that which browsers are recommended for the best use of Azure Databricks? Your options are Google Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Microsoft Edge, Internet Explorer or mobile browsers. And friends, the recommended browsers for the Azure Databricks are Google Chrome, Firefox, Safari and lastly Microsoft Edge. And friends, you can validate those answers on this Microsoft documentation where Microsoft has documented the browsers that are supported for Azure Databricks, not only for Windows, but also for the Mac OS. And with that, let's move to question number 74. The question says, how do you connect your Spark cluster to Azure Blob? Your options are by calling the dot connect function on the Spark cluster. The second option is by mounting it. The third option is by calling the dot connect function on Azure Blob. The correct answer for this question is option B by mounting it. And this is the Microsoft documentation tutorial where you can read more on Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2, Azure Databricks and Spark. And in this documentation, there is a section which will guide you on how to create a container and how to mount it. 
You can read the step-by-step -step process. The documentation link is provided in the description box. And with that, let's move to the question number 75. The question says, how does Spark connect to the databases like MySQL, Hive and other data stores? The options are JDBC, ODBC or using the REST API layer. The correct answer for this question is option A, JDBC. Now for those who don't know what is JDBC, JDBC stands for Java Database Connectivity. It is a Java API for connecting to databases such as MySQL, Hive and other data stores. And besides that, I want to stress that ODBC is not an option and the REST API layer is not available. That's why JDBC is just the right answer for this question. Now coming to question number 76, the question says that you need to trigger an Azure Data Factory pipeline when a file arrives in an Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 container. Which resource provider should you enable? Your options are Microsoft SQL, Microsoft Automation, Microsoft Event Grid or Microsoft Event Hub. The correct answer for this question is option C, Microsoft Event Hub. Now before I take you to the Microsoft documentation, let's understand few important keywords in this question. The question is asking you to trigger a Azure Data Factory pipeline when a file arrives in an Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 container, which means that we are talking about storage based triggers. And that's the reason I have come to this Microsoft documentation, which talks on how to create a trigger that runs a pipeline in a response to a storage event. And friends, this documentation describes the storage event triggers that you can create in your data factory or CNAPS pipeline. And after that, it talks about event driven architecture. That's a common data integration pattern that involves production, detection, consumption and reaction to events. And friends, then in the same paragraph, Microsoft says that Data Factory and CNAPS pipeline natively integrate with Azure Event Grid. And that's the reason we have chosen Event Grid as the answer to this question. Now coming to the question number 77, the question says that you plan to perform batch processing in Azure Databricks once daily. Which Azure Databricks cluster should you use? Your options are high concurrency, interactive or automated. The correct answer for this question is option C, automated. Now friends, you need to understand that Azure Databricks has two type of clusters. The first one is interactive and the second one is automated. And also pay attention that you use interactive clusters to analyze data collaboratively with interactive notebook. On the other hand, you use automated cluster to run fast and robust automated jobs. And that's what we are talking about in this question. We want to perform batch processing and that should be once daily. So this is an automated job that we want to run. And that's why we have chosen automated data cluster. Moving on with question number 78, the question says that which Azure Data Factory component contains the transformation logic or the analysis command of Azure Data Factory's work? Your options are linked service, data sets, activities or pipeline. The correct answer for this question is option C, activities. Now let's move on to question number 79. And the question says that you plan to ingest streaming social media data by using Azure Stream Analytics. The data will be stored in files in Azure Data Lake Storage and then consumed by Azure Data Breaks and Polybase in Azure Synapse Analytics. You need to recommend a Stream Analytics data output format to ensure that the queries from Databricks and Polybase against the files encounter the fewest possible errors. The solution must ensure that the files can be queried quickly and that the data type information is retained. What should you recommend? Your options are JSON, Parquet, CSV or Avro. The correct answer to this question is option B, Parquet. Now let's move on to question number 80, a very interesting question. And the question says that you have self-hosted integration runtime in Azure Data Factory. And you can see here that the current status of the integration runtime has the following configuration. You are given with the status which is running, type is self-hosted. We are also given with the version. Then we are given with lot of other information as well. Then my friends on the right hand sides, we are given with integration runtime has following no details. And then here you can see we are given with the name, status, version and all the other details as well. Moving on, the question is asking two answers here. The first question it's asking is that if the XM node becomes unavailable, all the executed pipelines will and your options are fail until the node comes back online. 
The other option is switch to another integration runtime. The third option is exceed the CPU limit. And the reason is that here we are given with high availability enabled equals to false, which means that the high availability feature is not enabled. You can see in this information here, here you can note the question is saying high availability enabled equals to false. And that's the reason until the node becomes available again, all the pipelines are going to fail. Now let's check out the other box. The other box says the number of concurrent jobs and the CPU usage indicate the concurrent jobs. And the options given are raised, lowered or left as is. And the correct answer for this question is lowered. And here comes the reason. So here in the question, we are given with the concurrent jobs, which is running slash limit is two by 14. And the CPU utilization is given as 6%. I hope you understood this point very well. The question says in the concurrent jobs running slash limit. So we are only using two while we have 14. So, so that's why we are paying for 14 concurrent jobs, although we are using only two. Moving on, the question says that we are only using 6% of the CPU that you have purchased. So which means what that we are paying extra for the other 94% that we are not using. And that's the reason we have chosen lowered as the answer to this question. We already have more resources. We are not consuming that. So that's why lowered. Coming to the question number 81, the question says that you have an Azure Databricks resource. You need to log actions that relate to compute changes triggered by the Databricks resources. Which Databricks services should you log? Your options are workspace, SSH, DBFS, clusters or jobs and the correct answer for this question is option D clusters. Now let's look at more information on each of the option. First, let's understand the cluster. So an Azure Databricks cluster is a set of computation resources and configuration on which you run data engineering, data science and data analytics workloads. And that's the correct answer for this question. Now let's look at the other options which are incorrect. So the first one is workspace. So Azure Databricks workspace is an environment for accessing all of your Databricks assets. The workspace organizes objects into folders and provides access to data and computational resources such as clusters and jobs. And then we have option B as SSH. Basically, SSH allows you to log into Apache Spark clusters remotely. And I'm pretty sure that many of you have already used SSH. Then the third option that we saw was DBFS. So basically, DBFS is nothing but Databricks file system, which is a distributed file system mounted into an Azure Databricks workspace and available on Azure Databricks cluster. And then finally, we have jobs, which is a way of running a notebook or jar either immediately or on a scheduled basis. And with that, let's move to question number 82, which says that which Azure data platform is commonly used to process data in an ELT framework. Do let me know in the comment section whether you understand the difference between ELT and ETL processes. Now let's check out the option for this question. The options given are Azure Data Factory, Azure Data Breaks or Azure Data Lake Storage. The correct answer for this question is Azure Data Factory. We have talked about Azure Data Factory many times, but in case you want more details on any aspect of Azure Data Factory or its key components, do let me know in the comment section. And if there is sufficient interest shown by the viewers, I will create a dedicated series on Azure Data Factory. But for now, let's move to question number 85. The question says that which Azure service is best choice to manage and govern your data. Your options are Azure Data Factory, Azure Purview or Azure Data Lake Storage. The correct answer for this question is option B Azure Purview. And this is the first time we are talking about Azure Purview. So let's go to Microsoft documentation and understand a little bit more on this. So here, my friends, this is the documentation on Azure Purview. So Microsoft says that Azure Purview provides a unified data governance solution to help manage and govern your on-premises, multi-cloud and software as a service data. You can easily create a holistic up-to-date map of your data landscape with automatic data discovery, sensitive data classification and end-to-end -end data lineage. Besides that, you can also enable data consumers to access valuable trustworthy data management. 
And also my friends, please note that Azure Purview is now Microsoft Purview. Now let's move ahead to question number 84. So this is a true false kind of question. The question says that applications that publishes messages to Azure Event Hub very frequently will get the best performance using advanced message queuing protocol because it establishes a persistent socket. Is it a true or a false statement? The correct answer that this one is a true statement. Now let's move on with question number 85, which is the last question for the part 7 on DP203 exam Q&A series. Reading the question, the question says that you have an Azure CNAP Analytics dedicated SQL pool named pool1. The pool1 contains a partitioned fact table named dbo.sales and a staging table named stg.sales that has the matching table and partition definitions. Now you need to overwrite the content of the first partition in dbo.sales with the content of same partition in stg.sales. The solution must minimize the load times. What should you use? Should you insert the data from stg.sales into dbo.sales or should you switch the first partition of dbo.sales to stg.sales? The third option given is switch the first partition from stg.sales to dbo.sales and the last option is update dbo.sales from stg.sales. And the correct answers, my friend, for this question is option B. Switch the first partition from dbo.sales to stg.sales. And the logic, my friends, is very simple. You have to observe what is the direction where we are overwriting the contents. Here in the question, you can see that we are overwriting the contents of dbo.sales with the contents of staging.sales. So that's why we are moving from dbo.sales to staging.sales. And due to that, option B seems the perfect answer for this question. We hope you like the 15 questions today on DP203. Please do appreciate our efforts that goes in bringing the correct Microsoft documentation to you. Before you leave the video, please press that like button and subscribe to the channel. A small step for you, but a big boost for us. And also connect us on other social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. The information is now on your screen and also available in the description box. Thank you for being with us. I will see you in the next video. Till then stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.